Good afternoon. Welcome to the transportation workshop, Tuesday, June 22nd. Invocations today will be led by Commissioner Pickens, Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Turner. All rise if you're able to do so. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this glorious day and all the wonders in it, Father God. We just thank you for the opportunity to gather here, Father God, as commissioners and staff, uh, concerned citizens, Father God. Just let us review and deliberate the information that's presented, Father God, and make the best decisions uh, for the citizens of Putnam County, Father God. We just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens, Commissioner Turner. Um, again, we need to recognize Mr. Sugg's birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Mr. Sugg. With the balloons still hanging on your chair. <laughs> we think we would have cut those off by now. All right, today um, we're gonna have public comments on agenda items. We do have public comments on miscellaneous in a few minutes. We'll get to that, but is there any public comment on any agenda items? And seeing now, we're going to go right into our BOC transportation workshop. Mr. Troxell, item A on your agenda. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, this first item is a, uh, a, a no through truck sign on Moats Road um, between uh, State Route 20 and St. John's Avenue. It's primarily a uh, residential area, but a lot of the heavier trucks are driving through that area. And so what we want to do is uh, we found the ordinance 2000-06 says the BOCC can pass by resolution um, a limited weight on vehicle class through, through residential streets. And so what we'd like to do is uh, bring this in front of the, the, the uh, consent agenda uh, for a resolution to, to make that happen so we can put Move signs room. up. Second. Proper motion by Commissioner Turner, <laughs> second by Commissioner Adamsack to put a weight limit on this road. Um, any further? This is one of those double chip seal roads, correct? I don't believe so. Yeah. I believe it is an asphalt believe road. Right. Yeah. This is the yeah. one that goes right from the, where the power lines go through. When you come out of Nine Mile Swamp, hang a left. Well, the next road through. up, yeah. One road the further next up. Part. They're both okay. called motor. The real, the, the real motor. Still, the old motor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We're All getting, right. we're getting heavy truck traffic there. Yes. Yeah. Huh. What they're doing is they're coming down moats, crossing 20, and cutting over to St. John. Call for question. All right, so we have a <laughs> proper motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Mr. Truxell, item B. Okay, uh, this one is uh, the leasing of, of six uh, other motor graders uh, from Ring Power. Currently, our, our existing lease will end in January or February of 2022. There's about a four to six month lead time to get new graders. Um, so when we asked them that, uh, they provided us the, the, the cost uh, for six of them. Uh, currently, it's, uh, currently we're paying $208,000 a year for, for, uh, for these things. And uh, the new contract would be 262,000 plus uh, for the six graders. That would be a five year, a five year lease. And so it'd be each, each year for six graders. Um, now, uh, I did get another email from uh, some other folks about looking at different different grader options out there. Um, we did find a few that were out there, one John Deere, uh, one of the cat, and then there's a Komatsu uh, uh, grader as well. Um, they were roughly the same, same cost, but I think Ring Power gives us a better maintenance package. But we can discuss that later if you guys want to discuss that now. But um, I just want to get this in front of the board saying, hey, uh, it's four to six month lead time for, for any grader we get. It doesn't matter which, which one we go with. It's just a long lead time because they don't, they don't have them sitting around the shelf. They'd have to get them built. That's what we want. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Turner. Okay, so we wouldn't be paying the new amount until next budget year, and we just budgeted in the next year's budget, the 262 <coughs> versus the 208. Absolutely. We paid, we're not paying them now. We pay them when we get to start the new lease next yes. year in January, February. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we've we've already paid the last of the of the five year lease period for our current graders. Right. Uh, so we don't owe them anymore unless we want to buy them out. But there is a buyout clause on those. But 
you know, when we get to our current graders have almost, by the time the, the lease comes up, they will have 4,000 hours on, on each of those graders. Because those are running every day. For a grader, it's, it's not a lot of hours, but that's when it starts to, to deteriorate quickly. We could buy them for 600 grand for all six of them, right? Like 105,000 apiece? No, no, no. They're, uh, they're, um, I thought the buyout was 105,000. The current ones, he's talking about. Oh, the current ones, 115,000. 115. So for 690 grand, we own them. Is there any way to, that we could finance those or release them, basically? I mean, people lease used equipment all the time. Um, Other than we're buying or we're, we're leasing five year old graders. What, what is 4,000 hours on a, I'm, I'm trying to picture what 4,000 hours on a diesel um, grader looks like. I, it, I know What's the equipment we run, and you know, four thousand hours doesn't seem like a lot. It's more of the, uh, not necessarily the, the the engine. It's more of the, the electronics and everything else that gets old on there and break. Uh, they, they had one down just for a steering uh, sensor. Uh, and just they, they just tend to break with after four years of use. More electronics on them than anything else. So it's like we have to spend. You're saying four years of use, but um, isn't this a six-year lease? It's a five. five, five it'll be five years. Year. Yeah. yeah, it's a five-year lease. So we're spending a million two to lease them every five years. Um, what do what do other counties do? They, they all lease them as well. They all lease. Yeah. 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 And there's no refurb program where you can like I know you can send a dozer off and have it brought back as brand new practically. Um, no no program like that where they can. Refund. Not that I've found. No, we can do we can do some more research on that. program for heavy, bigger equipment, I know. <clears throat> Mr. Turner? Yep. Um, you know, the, the difference is if this was my company, I'd look at everything that Jeff just said or Commissioner Rawls just said. But when it's this type of operation that the whole operation revolves around that baby running every single day, <coughs> every one of them running every single day, and when it doesn't, there's no operation going on, I, I just think we need to keep the newest, best, least maintenance involved road graders on the road that we can. And um, all it would take is one tremendous major breakdown and us not leasing it. And at that point, we would uh, we would pay for the lease in itself. So, you know, I'm in full favor of moving this forward, especially with the lease being budgeted in the next year's budget. Um, and I'm ready for a motion to do a motion whenever That's they, get, when they get done talking about it. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Adams, that. I think I kind of aligned somewhere between the two of them. Um, so it's kind of like you're saying there's 4,000 hours on the five machines we have, right? That's 20,000 hours. We're talking about leasing these for five years. That's 35,000 hours. We're only getting about 60% of the use of the warranty out of them in our lease period. I mean, is there a potential that we could buy one of the current ones and lease three? I mean, do you have, do you have five guys out there on graders all day, every day? Yes. We have six. So, yeah. so they're out there all the time? Every day. Okay. So we, we literally need to, because hours don't line up with that, that we have six people 40 hours a week, or 30 hours a week, let's say, that you know, five hours. Um, so the, the hours you put on the machines don't align with that. And then that might have been prior to you coming on, though, because um, you've only been here a year. But if, if we're definitely getting... 40 hour or 30 some hours out of each machine a week then then I guess I'm for it um, the numbers don't say that but um, so I don't know do we do we have any way to tell what our hours were in the last year since you've been here like, I, can, I, I can get that from cat because cat actually the uh, ring power actually can, can monitor that through, through their system. I'd like to know that I mean if you're getting better efficiency out of the equipment we have sitting here than prior administration was I'm all for it if if it's we're only getting 2,000 hours out of each, well, I guess it would be only 1,500 hours out of each machine a year. Um, that seems like we're, we got an asset that we're paying a lot for that we're not getting everything out of it we can. Okay. And it's kind of the same thing I said about the mowers. All right, Mr. Pickens. I think you answered one of my questions that Paul, Paul asked that you do, you do keep these uh, with dry, with operators, right? Yes. You're able to do that? Okay, and these would be new machines, not refurbished machines or brand new when you get them? These would be brand new, yes. Okay. All right, that's all. Mr. Turner? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I move we uh, move this item forward approved. Proper motion by Commissioner Turner to move forward. I'll second it. Proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor say, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Item number C, raise grant project recommendations. Okay, so this item is for the um, notice of funding opportunity that was published by the U.S. Department of Transportation in the amount of $1 billion. Um, we have recommended five projects uh, that we would like to apply for. Um, since Put Putnam County is considered an area of persistent poverty, according to the RAISE grant program, uh, less than 20% county match is anticipated. And Public Works requests the board's review of the recommended projects and provide Public Works with concurrence to move forward with the application process of three prioritized projects. And Public Works also requests that the board authorize the chairman's signature on any required documentation to complete the application process and a letter of support for the three prioritized projects. Commissioner Pickens, I mean Commissioner Turner, I'm sorry. Um, when, um, when we started to doing some of these discussions, I don't really have a problem with this except for I wish we could, didn't have such a large participation on the, when we started talking about this, we want to try to identify wood bridges that were having scalding of the pilings. And we wanted to, to take some collars and we wanted to put them around the, the bridge and fill the collars up with concrete and make them last another 10 years because we just fish, fixed the scalding. Um, so in this particular instance, what happened was is we identified the couple of bridges that, that were doing it real bad, but all of a sudden we need new two and a half million dollar bridges. That wasn't what the question was to start with. I get what we're doing, but are you saying that just to put collars around them columns, it's two and a half million dollars? Um, so, so these recommendations, they don't include that for this grant uh, program. The pro I, I, you can't I understand, Mike. I'm not trying to be critical okay. at all. I'm just saying that we wanted to take the two bridges and see if there were any more wood piling bridges that we could put a collar around and hire a contractor, put a collar around them, put uh, a pin in the, the collar where it doesn't move, pour it full of concrete, and there you are. It's fixed for a, a few years, and it doesn't cost a great deal of money so I'm not so sure that we couldn't do that for less money than what our participation in the grant would be with our 20% participation in the grant for a new bridge yes uh, that is one option that we can pursue um, for this one we, we can only apply for one bridge at a time so we can't apply for like a county-wide uh, putting collars on multiple bridges so we'd have to just pick one uh, so for this kind of program um, you know, we recommend doing more than just putting collars so we can extend the life of that bridge um, since we have this opportunity. And also the, the match, it says up to 20%. I did some research on other projects uh, that were funded by this program and they can uh, provide 100% funding as well. So I, I did want to mention that. Um, uh, so if you want to- Two issues, Mike, and let's try to discuss it. I guess my communication skills aren't very well. So two issues. I don't have a problem with going after the grant. I don't. The other issue is, is that if we don't get it, or there's some others around, we need to look at putting collars on these things, because in another five, six years, we're going to be spending the two and a half million, whether we like it or not, because the damn bridge is going to fall in. But if we put the collars around them and stop the, the scalding of the, of the uh, pilings, by adding the concrete above the water line or potential water lines or even up into the good wood again, then it's gonna stop that issue and it's literally pennies on the dollar of what we're talking about on this particular thing. I don't have a problem moving forward with what you're asking today to, to ask for these three projects and if we get them, okay, we, we got a half a million and a $3 million bridge and we're gonna move forward and. I don't really have a problem with that, but what I do have a problem with is that that somehow the communications got skewed in between where we started and where we are, that we want to identify the bridges around the county with wood columns that are scalding, and can we put can we put collars around them? I know we can, but it, would it be uh, cost uh, effective enough for us to put collars around them and save these bridges for several years. Absolutely, sir. Uh, and the, 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 it just comes, comes down to money. Again, we had a $700,000 budget this year 
for that exact same thing, but it had to go to the Barton Bridge. So I am planning again the next year to do the same thing, $700,000, so I can take care of those smaller, smaller bridge items that, that, that will extend the life of those slightly. But, um, so that, that would be that issue. I, I totally agree. We can do that. Well, if we could identify, and this is just this commissioner speaking, but if we could identify several bridges and, and it's going to cost $150,000 to save the life of these bridges and save the county potentially $10 million in, by spending this 150 or put the, the $10 million off for 10 more years instead of right now, I vow to you I'll help you find the money in our reserve fund <laughs> because spending 150 to save $10 million is good business. I don't care if it's government or not. So oh. if we could identify those bridges, you know, I'm sure we got more. If we, we could identify these bridges and start working at them, I think we could come up with a little extra money if absolutely necessary to make these things before we lose them. Correct. And, sir, I totally agree with that, and we have, we have all, the, all the data for all of our bridges. Um, and I'll be more than willing next year, once we get that money, we'll, straight away we'll, we'll get those things taken care of. Uh, but what I want to do is then, but this grant, this is, again, the, the separate, separate part of this thing is this grant. You know, um, maybe we don't work on the Orange Spring Cutoff Road or the other wooden road. Maybe we, we prioritize the other three items for a, for a raise grant this year. Or to try to get them to, to the grades grant, so we can get that much money um, on the federal side versus having to pay for it ourselves later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had all ahead. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. So, Mike, you and I have talked about the bridges before. <clears throat> One of the questions, the requests that I made um, was that we get there was a a, uh, a spreadsheet that was put out a while back, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and it had all the bridges on it. Has this been updated lately? That tells the so can we get a copy of that? Because I think that. For me, this is just me personally. Um, I know Fish Creek has been an issue for quite a while. It's been discussed for the past two years. I don't know, are we getting critical yet? Is it is it in the, is this one of the critical bridges? It is. So, it's one of the it's one of the worst uh, three out there. Okay, so I think for for me and and I hope for everybody else in the commission, it would be helpful if we had a list of all the bridges so we can at least take a look at what we're looking at in the future and um, and then get an opinion about whether or not we can do a, a temporary preservation um, and then see what the cost associated might be and start getting ourselves in a position to be looking out three, five, and 10 years down the road rather than hoping that we get this, this grant and you know it's $400,000, if we had to cover the um, four to $500,000, if we had to cover the 20% um, out of pocket, which would be pretty painful. Uh, but then again, we don't wanna lose the bridge either because a lot of people live on the other side of that bridge. If you know, Commissioner, if I may, Mr. Chairman, we've been trying to get the Fish Creek one moving for uh, over, well over a year now. Yeah, and I brought it up two and, and a half changed, years ago the first I know time. We and changed directors yep. in there, so that slows things down. But, yep. You know, we we just got to identify these, and it may this one's Fish Creek, but the next one could be in Bill's district. And then I'm just be, afraid it'll be is, fixed in a week. Is, <laughs> is, are we in jeopardy of having DOT come in on any yeah. of the, any other bridge in Putnam <laughs> County? and weight restricting it like what happened in that's, Barton? That's my concern. Are we looking at that at any bridge in Putnam County right now or, or getting close to it? Probably multiple, but the thing is is that some of these we can, some of those we so. can't I'm fix sure till we find the money. Report. That's just all right. there is to it. But some of these low hanging bridges, for the back lack of a better term, we could have fished, we could have fixed this bridge for you know, I always hate saying numbers because if I do, it'll blow all well, up. Yeah, but, but to let's Mike's say point 100 though, grand to put collars around it you know, and fill them yeah. full of concrete, and that's very generous. But Mike, Mike, Mike made a good point. He took all the excess money that he had on bridges and, and it went to Barden because right, of overages. I think we could have found some more if we'd have known that, like we could have saved Fish Creek and keep them spending three million on a bridge that we could fix right now for 75,000, and I'm throwing numbers. Right, right. But, but um, what would it, it take to get that, that information? Uh, what, what we have out there now, is what's, what's critical? We have that information. No, I mean, no, no, come in and have a conversation with us saying, here, here, here's our 18 bridges. These bridges have wood substructures. This is the ones that are more critical than others, and this is what we can do in the interim. Or there's nothing we can do, and we need to start funding or getting ready to fund the replacement. When, when, we, can what bring that back next, uh, we can bring that back next workshop. Yeah. I'm ready. Let's do it. 
You don't? I thought we'd well, I mean, I, so he's looking for action on this. I, I personally don't have a problem if, if we go after the, the, the $2.7 million for Fish Creek. Um, you know, it, it's, and I, I, you know, I guess we could pull the money out of reserves to pay the half a million to match, or you're saying it might be less. We're not. I, I, would, I would expect it to be a, lo a lot less. Honestly. I mean, it'd be nice to have a new bridge. I mean, we can always submit it, and if, if we get it, then we don't have to accept it either. Right. So. Yeah, if we can get, well, we would, ex I could assume we'd accept it. I mean, yeah. why would you not accept $3 million in funding and to get a new yeah. bridge when you, when it, even if it does cost you 538 So I don't know that it costs that much. I'm with you. With us being phys uh, classified as physically constrained, I would think that it's going to be a lot less money. So. Mr. Adams, is that your other floor? I guess <clears throat> Orange Springs cut off. I guess I'm just curious what the end bridge looks like. Is it is if we spend a million dollars, does that look like something that is a permanent bridge? What's the the structure of it? What's the it's is the, the approach higher than where it is? And I, I I don't understand the pictures when you guys give them to me like some of these other guys do. Been designed yet, so we don't know yeah. what it would look. But like. yeah, I would I would expect it to be a little higher and it'd be concrete. It wouldn't be wood. Yeah, and, and my concern there is in this, if we're talking five, ten years, on that particular bridge, if we could preserve it and find a way to put guardrails on it, like you're saying, for two hundred grand and put concrete around the pylons, I, I still see Orange Springs Cutoff as a road that needs to become paved at some point if we're talking about actually going point to point for the betterment of the whole county and connecting dots along with Lake Susan Road. Um, that's that's how you get that whole end of the county across the county for emergencies for other things there is no other route either that or we build a new road all the way through the woods which is never going to happen um so i just don't want us to put a million dollars into a bridge that doesn't meet that need at some point 10 years from now because that community is growing out there a lot of people don't get it because they do it silently out there in that corner of putnam county but more people are moving in there every day and uh it's right behind where I live, and I, I know a lot of the people, and they, they, they keep selling houses and keep moving people in. They keep rehabbing the trailers in those, that lake, Four Lakes community. Um, I mean, that's where a lot of these guys that come up and say they want their, their, their alleviated, um, fines alleviated for, they're, they're buying those properties up hand over fist, and it's going to explode out there. And uh, I just don't want to see us put a million dollars into a bridge that we need to do something different with. I agree. 10 years from now or five years from now, whatever it ends up being, because we need to pave up to it. And this, yeah. whatever we build, doesn't meet we that need. We always have the opportunity yeah. to turn this down or really <clears throat> yeah. know it at any well, time. And yeah, that, that's so right. I, I guess what I'm asking is I would love to see that next meeting yeah. to have that one be on there. What would it cost to get it to have guardrails and collars and maybe look at one of these other projects? And, and I'm not trying to kick a project out of my district, but there literally is like five houses on that road. So unless our goal is to yeah. to make the connection, I, I just don't see that one being the, as big. And, and I'm gonna, are you done, Mr. Adams? Sure. You know, I'm gonna piggyback on that too. Most people in this county wouldn't know where Orange Springs Cutoff Road is, you know. And and Mr. Adams, I could write, it serves about maybe 10, 12 people down there at that road. But if the plan is to connect. Um, that bridge, even rehab, won't cut the connection. You couldn't get fire trucks across there, and you couldn't do that. So, I think I I really want to applaud Mr. Adams Act for saying that. And maybe we need to look at. We know West River Road is heavily used right now. So, in my opinion, if we're going to find three projects, the Orange Springs cutoff would need to go away, and we need to add another, another maybe the Mason Branch project. Um, we can only do one bridge, though. Can we only get one bridge? Um, no, because Orange Springs Cutoff is a bridge. Yeah, that's a bridge so for too. Orange Springs Cutoff, uh, just to clarify that one, so the design has been completed a while back. Uh, so that's that's one reason why I've been applying for this bridge a few times, because we had paid errors. I have um, never I seen this bridge come to me before today. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. I, I will t seven years I've been here, I would have had this same conversation had I seen that y'all might have applied. But it didn't come to me. I will tell you that. If it did, I didn't see it. If we could see that design on the next. Yeah, okay. yeah I put but, a few pages of the design in the packet. Okay, so, but yeah, my point I, is, though, I think West River Road, we know that road, that place is expanding big time. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's where we need to focus our energy at right now. As okay. far as as far as this grant goes, we could move the, the grant forward as recommended, and then have them look into the collars and and the uh, concrete on Mason Branch. By the pictures, doesn't seem to be as bad as Fish Creek does. And so, but what I don't want to do is if it takes a some of the grants that I've seen coming in the past couple of years or past three years is we get a grant that takes two more years to get it designed and engineered and ready to go and put in. And so it's a bit after we get the grant, if we're lucky, it's a three year project or whatever. And I'm not being facetious, it's just what I've it, seen. It and is, so that's true. By the time it goes through all the steps. And so my concern is I don't think Fish Creek's got three years to wait. I'm just telling you. So. You know, I'm not so sure we still don't need to look at some collars on oh, Fish absolutely. Creek. And we yes. still, especially if we can get a contractor somewhere that that we can find <clears throat> that puts the collars in for real world pricing and we don't have to send it to CSI and get a $200,000 engineering charge. And we, then we don't have to send it to get an environmental uh, impact charge on it for Design another 75000 And we don't have to... So, and then the work's done and the work's 38,000, but the engineering and impact studies and everything else are 285,000. I'm being, <clears throat> I am being facetious, but you know what I am talking thing. about here. We <laughs> could right. just come up with a, a manufacturer's design. There's manufacturers that make these collars. Come up with a manufacturer's design, a manufacturer's installation standard, and put that on the street and find out can we bid that something do something for once in the life of the county that simple just come up with a manufacturer standard and manufacturer's installation and put it on the street and see if we can get it done okay. what he's describing is a prescriptive design and they're all out there for fiberglass wraps okay mr rodriguez i have a question can we take orange spring since we've already pretty much determined that if we're two to four years down even if we got it that the bridge wouldn't be compliant with anything that we need to do. I saw Mr. Troxell's head shake yes. Um, can we move the Orange Springs Cutoff Bridge to West River Road, Mason Branch? Can we do that? Because you're asking us to rank three out of five projects. You're saying highlight that one. I just highlighted that. I, I personally highlighted these three because okay. uh, I thought those were the top so, three, but that's, that's but just I me. think there was some confusion. We can only pick you, one or two bridges. You can, now you can pick any any of the five we want you can pick it a, a different project if you want but these right. were the so five I, I worst ones that we Palmetto came up Bluff with drainage i'm gonna well that's i think that's the conversation we need that mr adams Act has the floor then mr rawls you'll you can go i, I will say i support what Ch chairman harvey is saying as long as we look into this alternative for orange springs cutoff because long term it's 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 not kosher but I, i'm all for a band-aid in lieu of future plans for figure out how to cross the county right from there. Star Lake across to get towards Plaquemine. And the design here is for a box culvert, um, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a wood pile like there. it is now. So it's a complete reconstruction of the bridge. Without, so it would be able to support. But I've watched them YouTube videos and I could put that box culvert in overnight. Just to. <laughs> Hired. We're uh, starting with a <laughs> culvert out there in front of a point, point of wood. There you go. Put, yeah. that, there, put that one in for practice. If you watch them at YouTube. I'm going down on Junction Road if you master that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rawls, you have the floor. <laughs> and you slip at Hodney Express. I can't get you turned. There you go. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, Palmetto Bluff drainage is, is a, a huge need. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's that. In, I'm, I'm assuming that includes all of Millican Road, as well as right there where it meets Palmetto Bluff? This, this one doesn't include all of Millican. It's, it's um, mainly the cross strains is what makes it so expensive. I think there's like six cross strains in that project area, um, but it has a portion of, Mill of Millican. But if, if the contractor is mobilized out there, you know, it would it'd be a good time to, well, the, to look this at this. This is the issue that I, when you first started, Mike, that I showed you where you've got Apparently, there may or may not be an easement. You said you couldn't find it, so we don't have an easement, but we need to acquire um, the ditches and be able to convey the, the water. And the other part of the problem is is the, the um, uh, cattle farmers out there have cut their property to drain into our ditches. Mm -hmm. And if our ditches are designed to drain our roads, but we're also draining their property, how do we mitigate that? 
<clears throat> May I say, drive down St. John's Avenue and people have, have cut their ditches down there. Those businesses have cut them into our, it's the same, same thing. And we're having to deal with that water. But in, in the case of Millican Road, you have an area yeah. that you have created a, an entire swamp yeah. and the road is in the middle of it where it gets two feet into water with just heavy rains. Forget any storm events. And originally we were told there was an old Army Corps of Engineers uh, ditch that was dug that went toward the St. John's River to the St. John's River. But um, staff can't find anywhere where there's any easement that allows that water to go across anybody's property legally. There, You can see where, and there's a culvert that goes to it, but we don't know what's on the property because nobody has an easement to get out there and look at it. Mr. Pickens? Yeah, you may have mentioned, is the, the stormwater drainage that you've got highlighted at 800,000, is that just for general projects there, or that's for a specific project? So, so that one's for a um, stormwater mitigation like action plan for the entire county. So for a consultant to address the entire county and prioritize what areas need to be addressed first and even provide some preliminary plans to how to address those issues. So a similar project was completed a few years back um, and we would like to enhance it and also require them to give us some electronic files so we can upload it into GIS so we have the locations of all the structures and um, but that's a countywide uh, planning project. So for this grant it also covers planning projects. So what project? Exactly. Oh planned projects? Yes. Okay. Was that including funding recommendations? It was. <coughs> was that including funding <coughs> recommendations? Like a countywide drainage MSBU? I think I did include that. Like for the consultant to provide us with funding recommendations on what to pursue to address all the issues, I believe that that was included. And if it, if it wasn't, I can make sure it is included. So. What's included? A recommendation for another MSBU countywide? Um, We're gonna need an MSBU to tie our shoes directly, it seems like. <laughs> Now those recommendations are for you know which uh, which areas should be tackled first, which was one of the worst ones, then an uh, estimated cost to, to do what they need to do to, to mitigate the, the, the drainage. Well, all, the, all right. Well, let's. thing you're saying we would add is if they had recommendations how to fund those costs, and MSP may be one of the options. Well, before we get off on a tangent, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, can we just pick three I'm, and move forward, please? That's what I'm fixing to ask y'all to do. Okay, that's so I, that's I what's on. I move that we move forward the stormwater drainage, the Mason Branch, and the Fish Creek project. Okay, Sounds good to me. Okay, wait a second. Stormwater, Mason, drainage, Mason, Mason Creek. And Mason Branch and Fish Creek. One, three, and Paul, four. If you feel the same way, one, three, and four. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Adams, Act? that was a motion, I, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'll second that. And we got a motion, <laughs> proper motion on the floor, to submit. <coughs> number one would be stormwater drainage. Number three, Mason Branch, and number four, Fish Creek. We have a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion on these projects? Hearing none, all in favor, say, Mr. Adenbeck, you have your light on? Yeah, so I'm all for this. I just wanted to say I, I think the stormwater drainage being prioritized over Palmetto Bluff makes sense because part of that is going to say what we need to do. Um, so just being supportive. Okay. So all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. The move project, the stormwater drainage, Mason Branch, and Fish Creek. Thank you. Okay, moving on, item D, Mr. Troxell. I read the letter, Mr. Chairman, I read the letter, and that's exactly what we already yeah. talked about doing. I move we just move it forward. Move second. It. Approval by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Rawls. All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Public comment time on miscellaneous items. We've got some people in the audience today. And uh, Ms. Buckner, come up. Why don't you come up first? Um, I do want to kind of preface this that this was a situation <coughs> that developed a week ago and it got my attention um, and um, it seemed to have blossomed since then but go ahead and you have the floor you'll have three minutes to state your name and address for the record and uh, if you go over we're not going to penalize you at all period. okay um okay. i'm nancy buckner i live at 114 mccall street in hawthorne florida um, myself and all the residents who live on McCall Street uh, received a certified letter um, uh, around the 7th of June 
and we were informed that our street name was changed and we were given 20 to 30 days to change our addresses and all of our legal paperwork to um, go for Ridge Road. We were told that the reason for the change is that there are two, two roads in Putnam County that have the prefix of McCall. One is a street and the other one is a road and that it was causing confusion. Um, it made all of us very upset and angry uh, because as you all know, there are many streets and roads and avenues and courts that all have the same prefixes and having to change your address is not an easy thing to do when you're a homeowner. You have many court papers, many um, things that, you know, it, it requiring you to change your address is a costly and a laborious thing to do. Not only did the individual who took this upon herself, her name is Vanessa Thompson, um, go about trying to change our street name, but she also decided to annex some of the people's property in this process um, and rerouted uh, our what? street. I'm sorry. Annex, annex the property into what? Annex it. She changed the street and she took away people's property in the process of it. She changed the road, which amazes us that one individual has the right to do this. Um, I took it upon myself to contact all of my neighbors and to become the spokesperson. Uh, they, all of my neighbors ha had already contacted attorneys, as did I, um, and I have been assured that this is something that cannot be done, that we had legal standing. Um, I did contact Commissioner Harvey and he gave me his word that our voices would be heard. Um, I do want to point out that in her letter, uh, she made several errors anyways. Um, she states that uh, the roads that she even has listing up to our street, she's, she's misnamed. Um, it goes Rainbow Road to Silver Pond Dollar to McCall Street, and she's named them wrong, so she actually has changed several road names. I don't know who this individual is, but I sure hope that somebody is going to do some investigations and find out who it is that thinks that she can make changes without consulting people, especially taxpayers. Okay. I Ms. find Wagner, this very upsetting. Mr. Rawls, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to <clears throat> clean this up after. Okay, so well, one question I would have, uh, <clears throat> Rich, can we stop this process and have a hearing on this? Yes, we can. Okay. <laughs> um, Thank you, Rich. <laughs> no, I'm going to explain that in a minute, but that okay. person uh, that, has already spoken. All right. Um, <laughs> who has purview over this? Okay. Rich, why not? That's a rich question. There's an ordinance that we currently have. Go ahead, Rich. I'm sorry. That's My question right. is, can somebody just unilaterally change the name of a road without the BOCC consent? Yes, they can. Really? Rich is going to answer At the that. present time, it You're may not be question. shortly, what? but go ahead. So <laughs> when you look in our ordinances under section 45-653, it, it details the process for how street names can be changed. So there, but it doesn't there require any BOCC involvement. Part of, one part of the process would, the other part of the process does not. It Would depends any on part of this process require our input? I don't know right now. It depends on whether or not it's uh, platted or not, according to your own process under that section I referenced. So, so can we stop this process where it sits right now and bring this to have, have a, 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 a real discussion on it where we have all the information given us at one time? May I answer this? There is an appeal process that they can go through. Right now, the E911 coordinator has a lot of authority in, in the process to change it. This was done by the request of the Postal Service to change the road because of some confusion. Um, Mr. Suggs would be a part of that committee, and there's a few, the Public Service Director, there's a few other people that would be on that committee. Um, it's already but, been through that, right? But to answer your question a little bit more thorough, since we've been digging into this problem, if Ms. Buckner wanted to change the name to McCall, M-A-C-C-A-L-L, -L, which is really how Google finds it, she would petition the Board of County Commissioners at that point. So 
it's kind of, we, we really need to look at the ordinance. It's, it's very convoluted. Tabitha has been very diligent. Mr. Commando has been very diligent on this issue. So I think the board needs to give us a little bit of latitude to kind of put the brakes on it, go back and look at it. Ms. Thompson has no dog in the fight, if you excuse my French on that part. She doesn't mind one way or the other. She just kind of followed the ordinance that back in 2013 was set for her to follow, for that position to follow. Um, but it does give a lot of autonomy to that person. Can we stop it at this point until we look at it? That was the pertinent question that Mr. Rawls asked that I would like to know. It's already done. If you want to go back and address it further, <clears throat> the commission has the, the ability. The name change happened. Well, it happened based on the way the, okay. the ordinance is written out. Wow. So now, we, we have the authority to go back and change that. Well, there's an appeals process, There's right? an appeals process. And where would they appeal to us? To the, to the county administrator. Yeah. Mr. Commando, can you read the, who's on that? Well, did they, did they appeal? Well, I'm okay with who it is. It doesn't yes. matter who's on the board. I mean, on the appeals committee to me. Um, so they would appeal now if, if, if the people that live on the street that got the letter that said, by the way, your street, having been named that for 250 years, all of a sudden I've decided it ain't gonna be that anymore because the post office don't like it. <laughs> um, so does that mean at this point, your name, yours has changed. Can you go back and appeal that at some point? Or do you just have to sit on that I mean, this would upset me too. I'm trying not to be too, up, you know, too simple about this, but it would upset the fire out of me yeah. uh, if it happened to me. And so, uh, how come it was my street and not the other McCall? How come they didn't just make that one west and this one east? How come they couldn't? It seems to me like they could have done things other than completely renaming the road without any input from any of the residents on the road. I think this is a whole different issue than naming roads in a subdivision or naming roads you know, and on a new street. I know that there's a deal that I ran into not too long ago where if they have, if a driveway has more than three or four houses on it, it becomes a street and you've got to actually name the driveway. I ran into that and it takes a month or two and they came up with a name suited me fine. And so that was part of the, part of the process to build a house. But just to change one because the post office requested because they sent mail somewhere that upsets me I'll probably near about as much as it does this lady in the and the group it really does and if that's if that's the authority we've given somebody by a prior ordinance we need to take a look at that baby yeah, we need and we need it. to change that yeah. do what we yeah. need to change that we need to change that you betcha All right. so probably never been used so let me we stop this at this point or no no that's what I said but there's an appeal that's what part of the process is built into to take a look at things um, if there are people that are concerned about it. There's a lot more that went into that decision and I only know superficially some of the things considered that go into that decision that kind of got us to this point. Okay, well I'd like one committee, this commissioner would like to look at it again. It hadn't been looked at in seven, eight years. I'd like to look at it again. It could be that this is one of those bias, these, uh, these things that happen when, that you don't mean to happen you know when you're you, unintended in all in, yeah, un, yeah, exactly <laughs> unintentional circumstances that you the project the uh, ordinance was written and it was going real well and, and they did it for a certain reason and all of a sudden you burned down new york because you did it <laughs> so what i'd kind of like to see at this point if we could could we look at it have you all filed an appeal yet miss she didn't know there was such a thing okay. no and mr I chair to the commission to chair I, I haven't seen the letter. I've only heard about this kind of anecdotally from concerns that are brought to me. But from what, yes, ma'am. I mean, from what I understand, the, the, the effect, because we're being asked, is whether or not this happens. But what I understand is the effect doesn't go into, into place until, is it 20 days after the letter? Right, which we're about there. Right, but I, I, I was asked the question, is this done? Apparently it's not, because... And as far as annexation, nothing in this annexes any property. I think the worst thing that I heard is they've hired attorneys. And now, now you know, and citizens shouldn't have to hire an attorney for something like this. <clears throat> and I don't think they will. If, they, if there's an appeal process that goes to a committee, I don't think they got to hire an attorney. Just somebody can appeal and go forward. And well, they didn't know what the appeal, and they're at the end of their time. Okay, let's, Mr. Commando, what is, 
what what can we do to stop this right now as a commission? Well, I have can to the board appeal? Uh, well, the appeal goes. To I want to stop it right now goes until to we a, look at the. Appeal. I understand. It all goes to their committee. But it, um, but then there's some ambiguity there. No, there's there's also parts of your ordinance that in changing the name of a street, which would come to you. So, no, I mean there's not the board's not appealing because you would appeal to yourself. So we can't stop it, and we can't appeal it. Only they can appeal it, and we can't stop it while we look at the ordinance and look at if we want to change it or not. I mean, we can reach out to the E911 coordinator and talk to talk to her about kind of what the basis for the decision, ask to delay the implementation on the date. I think there's things that you are able to do. Terry, can you do that on our behalf if we gave you a consensus? I think that... A absolutely the, the, we'll reach out to uh, miss thompson and have a conversation does she work for you or does she work for another department uh she works for board of county commissioners so we'll have a conversation i understand that she may be out of town or what, but we'll reach out we'll do what we can between now and the 27th <coughs> i think is the uh the official day so we'll we'll see what we can we come can up with this and research down. this if it's been like that for many many years and i don't know why we can't slow it down long enough to take a look at it um, and see if that's what we need to do going Or can forward. we change the rename back? But, but I don't think that's going to solve the problem because right now the road is called MCCALL. And right now they changed the sign already, but right, but we but want we really that taken want down. It to be MACCALL. -C -A -L -L. -A -L -L. So the bottom line is to answer Commissioner Turner's question: Can we rename a road? We can do whatever we want to do. You want it to be named MAC. C A L L that matches Google, correct? Yes. And that solves the problem. But currently it's named M C C A L L. Okay, right? Right, correct. But M capital M small C is M A C C A L L. But that would actually eliminate all the problems. Right. Uh, we already had there's already been neighbors who have got had attorneys look into this and they just simply solved the problem by addressing their mail as m-a-c-c-a-l-l so, um, so the real quick answer here is we could rename the road m-a-c-c-a-l-l which is what i've done and all of my mail i've never had a problem everybody who changes their mail to m-a-c-c-a-l-l it comes because it changes the code on the mail yeah. and nobody has a problem anymore. There There's not that many houses on our street that get mail. Do you need a motion? Mr. Commando. Sir. The Can simple answer here, the, the simple answer is. No, you can't make a motion to just change the road right now. I mean, because there's a process I that can't you have. Hear you, Rich. No, you cannot just make a motion to change the name of the road today. First off, it's not on your agenda. Second, that doesn't follow the process that we have as part of our ordinance. I mean, there's percentage requirements for people that live on a road that want to make a petition. Okay. I'm, I'm personally, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'm personally not asking to do that today. I'm just not wanting the road to change the Gopher Ridge Highway or whatever it is. I don't want it to change that before we can discuss it and go through the motions and before the, 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 the administrator can reach out to the 911 a coordinator and say that 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 it sounded to him from our conversation like the board was not pleased with what has taken place and so to either stop it while we look at it or slow it down or to, well, to I, if she has the authority to rename it to Mac Halls obviously because she named it Gopher Ridge Highway or whatever it is right and there as you described there's a number of different aspects to look at um, that's where the administrator will reach out to the E911 coordinator. I think it probably would behoove all of us to find out. I don't know what the post office's initial concern was to begin with. I mean, we're, we're assuming things that we don't have any information on. There's, like I said, there's part of the analysis that even uh, Chairman Harvey and I have been made aware of as far as how it was considered on which road. Yeah. I agree. All those things can be looked at, which I, I believe the administrator is going to do. Well, you need a motion to take it for the administrator to take it forward, or are you just going to take it forward and see if you can work it out, Terry? I'll take forward with it, and I'll, I'll reach out to uh, 911. I'll also reach out to the post office, see what information I can gather up, and then bring back and have there some might conversation. might not be an issue. I mean, we've been doing this for since 13, and this is the first time there's been an issue. Let's, if it's not an issue and we can fix this one and move forward, then maybe that's what we need to do is just fix this one and move forward. And if there are 
unintentional circumstances because of this issue, maybe we need to tweak it a little to make sure it doesn't happen to somebody else. I mean, I don't know. So the post office could say we need to change St. John's Avenue to another name and everybody <laughs> all up and down St. John's Avenue has got to change their address. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I'm being a little facetious, no, I know. but the same I, thing. I, I agree. And if the board would allow, I would like to be involved with Mr. Suggs on that. Uh, it is my my district. And, and only because I want to say this, I think, I, I don't believe the lady had bad intentions. I think she did the job that she was required to do based on ordinance. But there's no stopping point at this board. And that's what gives me heartburn. Because we're, you're elected, you're our employers employer, yeah. and we have it didn't come to us and that bothers me by ordinance well, what, what bothers so, me is if, 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 correct me if I'm wrong but one person started this process the post office started the process to one person and that one person was able to file the paperwork get a road name changed correct and and, and everybody's affected with no input because one person did this Correct. Correct. And that does not seem right. Excuse me, but you're saying it was the post office. I was told a completely different story. Well, so we've got we got to get to the bottom of it. Yes. I'm just telling you what I, I was think. Told. I think that's a flaw in our, our system, though. If we can, if one person has that autonomy, <clears throat> well, then that that's what we need to look yeah. at the ordinance. But well, right now, what we're going to do is give our county administrator time to go back and look at it with, along with me. You hear the weather alerts going I'm on. I'm hoping not. Chairman, I'm that we give you and the administrator the authority to just move forward and try to fix this. And if you deem there's a reason, you definitely have the authority to bring it back to this board as chairman. So, yeah. all right. Census. Second? Mr. Adam Second. Jack? Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, good. The ayes have it. Okay. We're going to get back with you. Don't, don't go. Do I need to do don't change your address. Appeal? Do I need to <laughs> fill out any paperwork? Oh, uh, not right now. You're going to take I care will of it. I will keep you in the loop. I promise you. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Is there any other public comment to come before? Okay. Oh, we're going to get a lot of rain. Well, it opened up a can of worms, and in government, you know how you open up a can of worms, and you can't get the worms back in the pot. So, man, sir, if you'll state your name and address for the record. Bobby Wilson, 125 McCall Street, Hawthorne, Florida. Okay. Is that MCC or MAC? <laughs> it does for the record. M A C C A L L. <laughs> it's the same street y'all just was talking about. <laughs> My concern is the way they've got this, there's a road that goes through my property. Okay? I have concerns with it because it cut off quite a bit of my property. Now, where, where did this come from? Is this coming from our public works folks? No. Did they change the no. center line of the road? Come from it, there the was map a, that was sent out. There was the a map attached to the letter. I have the, the map, map doesn't here. Take anyone's property. I think it's just an illustration that is being misinterpreted. The, those gentlemen would have to change the center line of the road. <laughs> it's a private road out there, and there's we just learned there was some issues. So is McCall ahead. a You've private road? You've got three minutes to speak. Okay, I don't want this road through my property as well as you wouldn't want it through your property. These trucks go around this curve, okay, around an oak tree. It is almost knee deep, okay? They steady getting stuck in it. Uh, they speed around it. Now they coming into my yard with it, moving further and further into my yard. Now, I want it stopped. They have no right on my property. It's private property. Mr. Wilson, may I ask you a question? Yes. Before the meeting started, I was hearing that fences were put up. Police officers were out there ripping fences up. Yes, sir. Okay. This was from and a also, neighbor. I also heard it was a private road. Is that what I'm hearing, too? Yes, it is. Okay. But you okay. realize that we... The neighbor across the road... There's a fence that goes from one subdivision through our subdivision into Gopher Ridge subdivision. They have cut this fence. Okay. Now he's wanting to move the fence into my property. Okay. He goes out there. He puts up a stake. Sir, I, I think this is a civil matter. I don't think we have any we purview have no over this at all. Well, according think, to your map, you do. 
that's not our map. Well, that's that's just the represent. You heard the attorney say that illustration. was illustration. Illustration. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't a survey map. Okay. If it involves what, private what, property, what do I need to do to fence my property, sir? We yeah. can't tell you what you can do on private property. So, in other words, I can go home and fence my property. You Absolutely. Do, if you have private property, you can do what you want to do on your private property. Thank you, sir. Yep. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So that means waste pro can't go across my um, property. That means anything. Well, correct. It, it, it's your property. I mean, it's my property. Yeah. I have the deeds. But there might be easements. If there's an you easement on the property, that's a different there's story. There's no easement. Okay. Well. No easement. But you want to be a good neighbor too. If they've been using tried that, tried that, sir. But they've been using that for. A I while. have tried that. Are we consult with an attorney first? Because I've this this is a civil issue, phone. and it really, really, you really need to be advised by an attorney. Just, just tread. He slept in a Holiday Inn, and, but he's not an attorney. Lead. No, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, 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 according to the law, you're allowed to fence your property. But you need to be careful. There could be easements, prescriptive yeah. easements. There's all kinds of legal. And our attorney will not be able to advise you on this, nor will our public works. You but he'll really gladly give you a business card and tell you to call him later. <laughs> well, I, I have an attorney. I have plenty of attorneys. And, and, and I, I will be using yeah. them. I think this is a civil matter. Somebody's going to buy the easement yeah. or buy me out or I'm fenced. Yeah, I hear you. That's a civil matter. But we didn't give you any advice whatsoever. Yep. We're not capable of it. <laughs> is there anybody else in the public would like to speak? All right, we're going to close our public comment period. <laughs> Commissioner comments, uh, Mr. Adams, do you have any? I'm good, thank you. Mr. Rawls? Actually, I'm let me, I do want to, I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So, so I do want to say something quick about, uh, our president did make a good decision here recently with the recognizing of um, Juneteenth. Um, president Trump had, had talked about doing that and the prior president before that had as well. Recognizing so, um, what? Juneteenth oh. is, is a holiday. So, I mean, I, I applaud the, the celebration of the emancipation of slaves in the country, and I, I think that's a great thing. And uh, I just wanted to make note of that because we really haven't talked about that as a board. And there were several Juneteenth festivals throughout the county. One got advertised in the paper. There was other ones that happened the weekend before and stuff. And I think it's great that we all get out there and uh, celebrate the moving forward of our country. And, and hopefully this can be a jumping point Juneteenth going forward to to look at slavery in today's world and uh, sex slaves and sex trafficking and everything else that occurs today as something that we can unify behind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. That, that was on one of my lists this morning. Mr. Rawls, do you have any comment? Um, no, we, <laughs> okay. I can't wait until we can get back to work on this because this is uh, something I think we do need to take a look at. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's discussion um, with the uh, MSBU. <laughs> I think that want to go there, don't you? I know. No, I, I'm. I'm. Well, I, I leaned into Commissioner Piggins. Yeah, I said it, it, it's really raining out there, and and my, I'm waiting for my phone to start lighting up and getting the emails. And um, you know what the rain brings? It brings emails and phone calls. So um, you know, hopefully we can do something to alleviate some of the strain on our budget and be able to get um, <coughs> some funding for our folks that, that are out there busting their rumps every day, trying to keep the status quo. Mr. Pickens. I was going to say, Mr. Troxell, I'm sure I'll be in touch with you tomorrow with the <laughs> amount of rain that we're getting, if we're getting some of this in South Putnam. But anyway, no, I'm, I'm good. Looking forward to tomorrow. I'm sure West Putnam is slurping it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner. I have nothing to add. Thank you. Mr. Attorney. Just briefly, I needed to announce that we will be having at the board's discretion uh, an executive session on June 13th. Um, looking at what our calendar, I'm sorry, July 13th. What we're looking at right now, uh, based on the calendar, is having that at 1045, hopefully towards the end of the actual commission meeting. There are some issues that our workers' compensation attorney, um, Ed Lefevre, will be here to present some information and discuss some settlement negotiations on a pending case. So if you have any questions between now and then, please let me know, and I'll be happy to speak with him. Uh, we will obviously have the beginning of the meeting um, in public and then we will close for executive session and then upon conclusion it'll be open opened once again good deal thank you and i i see that happening after the commit the public comment the second public comment period um you have no comments no uh, county administrator you have comments no sir no comments at this time all right this meeting's adjourned thank you